In a previous video we had a look at digital command control. In this video we are going to have a look at one of the other systems commonly used in modern railroading, which is Loconet. We'll start off with a small introduction to the Loconet system, and then jump straight into connecting an Arduino to Loconet to send and receive Loconet messages. Loconet was developed by Digitrax as part of a DCC train control system and it was developed to handle the communications between throttles, stationary decoders and other devices that needed to communicate with the command station. Loconet is a peer-to-peer -peer local area network and Digitrax designed it for very high traffic capacity, free form wiring as well as future system expandability and ease of upgrade. It is a separate circuit from the track power used to run model trains. Over the years, Loconet has been adopted by several other manufacturers. In Europe, notably by Eulenbrock. You will find Loconet on Eulenbrock's Intelliboxes, Fleisman Twin Center, DigiKai's DR5000 and many, many more. The great thing about Loconet is that all modules attached to it know what all other modules are doing. Because of this design, you will find that Loconet's main benefit is the ability for modules to run standalone without the need of a central command station. Loconet is a networking technology that uses CSMA CD or Carrier Sense Multiple Access Collision Detection. It's similar to Ethernet networking, commonly used to interconnect various network devices, such as computers, high speed modems, printers, and so on. But Loconet is optimized for model railroading. Carrier sense means that the message sync is done within the message stream, since all devices on the network see all the messages being transmitted. The devices also know when the network is busy. Multiple access refers to the ability of all devices to access the network and generate messages on their own, without direction from a central controller. Collision detection means that when two devices try to send messages at the same time, thus creating a conflict, they can resolve those conflicts on their own. Loconet uses standard American phone line wiring. These cables have six wires, which is two more than you will find in Europe. The inner wires, number three and four, carry the actual Loconet signal. The other two, number two and five, are signal ground. The outer wires 1 and 6 carry either real sync signal from the central unit or they carry 12 volts DC current. This is the only difference between a Loconet B and a Loconet T terminal. Because a booster needs a real sync signal, you will need to connect it to a Loconet B terminal. The Loconet B terminal also has a lower maximum power output, it's only 200 milliamps. The Loconet T can deliver 500 milliamps, and its purpose is to connect throttles, decoders, and other Loconet accessories. Now, before you head on over to my GitHub to download the schematics and the PCB, I have to put in a little disclaimer. The PCB was designed using schematics I found on the internet, and I'm not an electrical engineer. Everything's working perfectly and it hasn't damaged any of the Loconet equipment that I have. But I'm not able to test it against all Loconet equipment, so be advised. And the last thing I want to say about this PCB design is that it uses the LM311N comparator. When used with Loconet, the LM311N is used a little bit out of spec. As we speak, I'm working on a new PCB design using the LM393 comparator. Also, this new PCB design will integrate both Loconet and DCC on the same PCB. I will put it out there as soon as the design is finished. Now, let's head on over to the software side. We'll open up the Arduino IDE, wait for it to start up, And I'll check if I have the right Arduino selected, in my case the Arduino Nano. I'll check the serial port. 
and I'll start by installing the Loconet library using the library manager. Wait for it to update the installed libraries. And we will search for Loconet. And we'll just install the latest version. Now once the Loconet library has been installed, it also installed a couple of examples. And we'll open up the Loconet monitor example. We will hit the button to compile and upload this sketch. And we'll wait for the upload to complete. And once the upload is finished, we'll open up the serial monitor. In the serial monitor, we'll make sure that we have selected the correct baud rate. Now let's start pushing some buttons on my command station and see what happens. And I can see local net messages coming in. So interface seems to be working fine. Let's disable track power. And remember the last line, which says RX82. Digitrax has made a personal edition Loconet PDF available, which describes their protocol specification for non-commercial private use. But to be honest, I use the Rockrail Wikipedia site a lot, because it also has the same information, but in a much more user-friendly and readable format. You can read up on all the 2, 4, 6 and variable message opcodes. And let's have a look at the one that I told you to remember. 82. Loconet uses the 82 opcode for global power off. Which was sent out by my command station when I press the red stop button. In a future video we will delve deeper into Loconet. And start sending and receiving Loconet packets. Subscribe to my channel to be automatically notified when new videos come out. And as always, if you like this video, like, comment or subscribe.